Is Code Llama actually better than GPT-4? At this point, I've come across a multiple articles that actually claims that Code Llama or Slash Llama 2 are better than GPT-4 in programming, which I do not believe is the case. So I wanted to try it out with a case that might be closer to what happens in the real world. I mean, you might now criticize that I've actually taken hacker rank problem and then I've tried to solve it and hacker rank do not necessarily represent the real world, but this is one test that I wanted to do, but it was actually fun. So I decided to make a video out of it. We have a hacker rank problem at hand and we're going to use both Code Llama and GPT-4 to solve that. First of all, before you go into the video, a big, big spoiler for you is that none of these solutions managed to solve this entire, all the test cases that HackerRank wants you to solve. But anyways, it's it's fun. And if you want to know the winner, let's get started. We have copied the HackerRank problem. The problem has been completely copied, including the constraints that they're given. Start a new chart on GPT-4. Just remember that this is GPT-4. And I went to Perplexity Labs Llama chart, which is powered by Code Llama 34 billion instruct model. And I went ahead and gave the same model, same question there. So at this point, we have instructed both GPT-4 and Code Llama 34 billion parameter model to give us the answer. And once we get the answer, we are going to try out the code on HackerRank interface. The first problem that you would see from Code Llama is this is the code that we are going to try from Code Llama. And as you can see, the HackerRank problem very clearly said that the function should be named max element. It's a max with a lowercase and the element E with uppercase. But Code Llama did not respect that instruction. And that is the biggest first problem that you can see that we have got the runtime error and the max element, the name is not defined. You might find that this is a very small problem. And this also actually indicates how it is important for a language model to follow instructions, not necessarily when it is solving code to just solve the code problem, but also it says the value of following instructions every single step. So it didn't do the max element properly, but when you uh, manually fix the max element and then try to run the code, it runs the code and it manages to in fact pass two test cases out of uh, the 14 test cases that they've given. So two, I think 15 test cases. So it is two out of 15. Code Llama has managed to run two out of 15 out of the box. Now let's go to GPT-4 and GPT-4, just first thing I noticed is the function name. GPT-4 has got the right function name. Let's paste the code and try to run the code. Once you try to run the code, you can see that the code works fine. At this point, you might actually think that GP hey, Code Llama is actually good because you know, the GPT-4 result is going to surprise you. GPT-4 also managed to do only two out of 15 test cases. So you might start claiming that Code Llama is actually good. I'm not saying Code Llama is bad. Code Llama is actually good, like one of the most advanced models that we have got than anything else. But the problem starts when I start prompting more. For example, I just said it didn't pass all the test cases. Can you check the code once again? And also I'm giving, you know, and instructions about how to keep the function name, change the function name to the name that I want, which is max element, not max underscore element. And once I said that, and as usual that it is giving me updated code, but if you see the updated code, there is a big problem in the updated code. The code, the function is supposed to have three parameters, the three arguments, but the new code that Code Llama has given me has only two arguments, which is a big problem. It has, it, there is a clear instruction that it should give me three arguments, but it didn't give me three arguments. It has given me only two arguments, which is something that I'm going to tell Code Llama to fix it. Okay. Now let me go to Code Llama and then tell Code Llama that, Hey, Code Llama, you, it has, the function has to accept three parameters and then you have to do, uh, give me all those things. Now, when I said that it completely went over, it completely went to a totally different problem. It managed to give me three parameters, but it went to a totally different problem. And that is a big problem. Now, once again, this indicates that it is not following instructions properly with the given context. It has not kept the context. So now I'm going back once again and saying that you have, uh, you have just completely gone completely without something else. And uh, once again, when I'm asking, it is giving me a different function name. Once again, I'm asking you to keep the function name. When I ask you to keep the function name, it is giving me only two parameters. And I just said, oh my goodness, you changed the input parameters to just two. And once again, I'm asking you to give me three parameters. If you are watching this video, you might be thinking that it is not a big issue, but at least like, at least for me, when I was trying this, it was a big issue. Ultimately Code Llama gave me the right code. Once again, this could be also fixed with prompting. It's not like, you know, my prompting was great. It could be definitely fixed with the detailed prompting. But now when I ran this code, I found out another problem that Code Llama has managed to use something called ARR and that the object does not exist. 
this is another big problem if i'm using ai to solve my code i don't want it to randomly introduce something where i'm going to solve object not found error or it's not defined error now when i'm asking code lama again it gave me totally totally something different and that once again creates a lot of problem if you see this function it's longest increasing subsequence so this is not at all related to our question at this point i'm kind of slightly frustrated i would say with uh, all the great things about code llama that i heard i mean definitely code llama is good like i don't i don't mistrust the benchmarks but i don't trust them also completely so i said i'm sorry to ask your help i'll better ask gpt4 goodbye and code llama is upset it says hey wait don't go i'm happy to help but anyways now i moved on to gpt4 completely we have already got the latest answer from gpt4 copying the answer pasting it here on hacker rank once again running the code first just to make sure that it is compiling fine and then running all the tests when i run all the tests you can see one second gpt4 is not perfect gpt4 manages to solve 2 out of 15 and uh, i think 1 out of 15 yeah sorry 1 out of 15 this is terrible this is in fact degrading from the earlier performance so i decided to educate gpt4 or not gpt4 saying that okay why did you give me this output when the input should when the input was this the output should have been this for example when the input was 371 i got an output of 21 while the expected output was this which is 3 in this particular case so i am asking code uh, gpt4 to reconsider its cases so that you know it has that extra feedback going from us code uh, gpt4 very well goes again on that explanation mode that which it usually does it is really good for a lot of different cases but in my at least in this case because i'm just literally doing code checks i didn't want this entire explanation which i should have added in the prompt but i didn't anyways it is finally giving me the code and as you can see the good thing that i like again is the function name is intact the parameter names or the argument names the object names are intact it is same it's not introducing something random that is not defined before it is not perfect it is not going to solve the problem before you watch the rest of the section i can update you this but i like the fact that if i have to debug a solution in this case any day if i have to debug i'm going to prefer gpt4 here because gpt4 keeps everything intact still tries to format the code for us run everything and then you will notice that still it misses but this time we have got a huge hit huge improvement which is 4 by 15 that is a good thing for us because we managed to ask gpt4 give some feedback from 3 by 15 we managed to go to 4 by 15 and that is that is a good thing for us so the point here is that gpt4 is good for me for a couple of reasons one it follows instructions very properly when it makes a mistake i can ask gpt4 to fix it i can give that extra feedback and ask gpt4 to fix it so third thing is when you are asking it to do certain follow up things it doesn't mess up with the code base that is currently available unlike code llama where it messed up the code base existing code base and that kind of created me problem and finally finally i would any day prefer gpt4 code to debug than anything else if you have watched this video i would love to hear your opinion about what do you think about gpt4 versus code llama discussions and i know i know that a lot of people are already happy that code llama is really good and there are a lot of derivative models that are coming up like wizard wizard python wizard 34 billion python para, 34 billion parameter model the find model all these models are good but the fact is that gpt4 is still i think the undisputed king of coding models and uh, how you prompt has a lot of factor how what kind of constraints you define are, is really good and uh, i think that is where gpt4 shines to be honest it's not perfect yet like i said but i would honestly today in 2023 i would prefer fixing gpt4 code um, any day than anything else finally i said gpt4 you failed in a lot of test cases i'm sorry i asked the help help from ai gpt4 kind of got offended which i didn't expect to be honest it ended the chat which is quite absurd but maybe it's 2023 ai doesn't like to hear such bad things from human beings um, but uh, maybe that's that's one of the reasons of rlhf uh, reinforcement learning from human feedback anyways this was fun putting together if you have any questions let me know in the comment section otherwise see you in another video happy prompting